Oh, the humble dinosaur, destined to toil in obscurity, never particularly interesting to anyone. A few small attempts have been made on film to showcase these ancient behemoths, but they haven't added up to much and it is likely that nobody even remembers them. In addition to this, several toy companies have tried to produce and sell toys based on these dull creatures. But our understanding of these creatures has changed throughout the years, and thus so has the effort to create toys based on them. Dinosaur toys, while rare, are an important part of many people's childhoods and bring back great memories. Often when viewing these toys, it's not about how accurate the portrayal of them is by scientific understanding, but how they bring back fond memories, or sometimes just how interesting or weird they look. But to really understand the history of the dinosaur toys, we need to go back through time to a prehistoric, dimly understood era. A time when the mighty T-Rex was not just confined to zoos and parks, but ran free, dragging its tail and standing upright like proud Rory Calhouns. We must go back to the beginning. To the time of the Marks Company prehistoric dinosaur playset. The Marks Prehistoric Beast toy playset is one of the earliest dinosaur toy sets to ever be produced. First produced in 1955, here is a Sears Christmas catalog showing it in 1958. The Marks Toy Company produced the Prehistoric Beast playset in one form or another until the company went defunct in 1980. Here it is offered in the 1979 Sears Wishbook catalog. Most of the dinosaurs offered in the playset changed very little between 1958 and 1979. The background scenery was the item that changed the most. Even the number of prehistoric creatures and cavemen offered in the playset changed very little. The set originally included this large one-piece molded plastic play environment. The landscape included terraced hills, ponds, and a waterfall. Here is a good look at some of the dinosaurs offered in the early version of the Marks playset. Many of these dinosaurs and cavemen would be included in later editions, and many are still available in cheap dinosaur playsets to this day, but a few were modified in later productions. Perhaps it is the Tyrannosaurus rex that would undergo the most significant change. The Tyrannosaurus rex, or the T-Rex, was originally molded to look similar to many of the early portrayals of the beast such as the one found in Rudolf Zallinger's famous murals in the Peabody Museum. But the T-Rex would be totally changed and given an entirely new mold. This T-Rex would look a lot closer to the Charles Knight version of the T-Rex. The Marks Toy Company changed the landscape portion of the playset every so often. The large molded plastic play area was replaced by smaller ponds and caves that could be broken apart or reconnected in a modular fashion. And they also offered this large mountain play set. They came with a double mountain environment and a plastic play mat. The dinosaurs offered with each version of the play set were generally the same, but they were offered in different colors. They were generally molded of a single piece of plastic, and each one was usually molded in one single color. They usually offered no extra paint or coloring on the figures. Though the sets were slightly different through time, they were usually called the Prehistoric Something Set. This could be Prehistoric Beasts, Prehistoric Monsters, a Prehistoric Mountain, the list goes on. While many kids through several decades owned a version of the Marks Dinosaurs, the next set of dinosaur toys was highly influential, but offered on a much more limited basis. The Sinclair Oil 1964 World's Fairs World of Dinosaurs Moldorama Dinosaur Figures. At the 1964 World's Fair, Sinclair, whose mascot is a green Apatosaurus, set up a walkthrough dinosaur exhibit with full-sized animatronic dinosaurs. This is one of the most famous exhibitions in the history of dinosaur exhibits, and was very popular and considered quite the marvel at the time. When visiting Sinclair's Dino Land, the Sinclair Company offered several ways in which kids could take home a little bit of the dinosaur magic. One of the most famous is the dinosaur figures that were created in the Moldorama machines located in the area. The Moldorama is a machine that has been around a while and is still found at certain attractions such as the Brookfield Zoo. 
Once money is put into the machine, superheated liquid plastic is pumped into a mold before your eyes, and, once cooled, the toy figure is deposited for the child to take home. The dinosaur molds were based on the life-sized animatronic dinosaurs from the exhibit. While the displays are not considered accurate by today's standards, they still look great and were highly detailed and continue to have a great deal of appeal. And the Moldorama figures were no different. There were seven different figures offered, including a Triceratops, an Ankylosaurus, a Stegosaurus, a duck-billed Trachodon, and an Apatosaurus, or a Brontosaurus, as it was called back in the day, a Corythosaurus, and the mighty and always popular T-Rex. And here's the T-Rex. The head is large and the stance is upright, but it was still a pretty nice looking dino, especially when compared to some of the later rubber dinosaur toys that would be offered in the future. The Triceratops is also pretty nice, but the Moldorama plastic was notoriously brittle, and often the toy is now found lacking a horn or two. Here is the Stegosaurus of the set. Notice that the head is relatively small in comparison to the body, and he doesn't have a maw filled with jagged predator-like teeth. This will be important later on. The same for the Ankylosaurus. Once again, not a bad rendition considering the age and the time period that this was made. And here is the Corythosaurus and Trachodon. They were likely the B-listers at best, and probably most often purchased to round out the set, but maybe I'm wrong. And here is the man or dinosaur of the hour, the Brontosaurus and Sinclair's official mascot. Still a better rendition than you would see in this kind of dinosaur for many upcoming years. The Moldorama toys were not the only dinosaur figures offered at the 1964 World's Fair Dinoland exhibit. Sinclair also produced a bag set of smaller dinosaur figures that were all packaged together. But not all toys of this time period were putting such effort into scientific evidence and attempts at accurate reconstruction. In the 1960s, the toy company Ajax offered these hollow molded plastic dinosaurs. Once again created of one single piece of single colored plastic, these were a bit larger than the Marx dinosaurs and they did have good detail, even if that detail was pretty far from accurate even by the standards of the day. The Stegosaurus's head was depicted as pretty large, and almost all of the dinosaurs, whether carnivore or herbivore, would feature a maw filled with sharp teeth. The T-Rex was in an interesting bent forward position, unlike most of the fully upright depictions of the dinosaur from this time. The Moss Chops toy was an interesting addition, and as a child it always reminded me of the beast from 20,000 Fathoms. Ajax would also offer smaller dinosaur toys and sets, and a few other toy companies would produce sets of low-detail, small-molded plastic dinos. But there was another type of dinosaur toy that was fairly common during this time period, and it was also offered at a pretty low price point. The Molded Eraser Figure or Toy. These were fairly common throughout the next few decades. They were created by the Diner Eraser Company. The company has been around a long time and has been producing molded erasers in the forms of small cars, marine creatures, jungle animals, cartoon characters, and even spaceships and aliens like I discussed in my video on old space toys that were around during the late 1970s and early 1980s. These little toys were given out as cheap prizes at fairs and carnivals, sold at gift shops, and even handed out as rewards at doctors and dentist's offices back in the day. And it looks like they're still out there making music. I found this collection for sale at a dentist supply company. They are apparently still made by Diner, and the molds have only been slightly changed. It appears that the legs have been altered so that the erasers can now be put onto the tops of pens and pencils. It's good to see that they're still out there doing well for themselves. But the next big evolutionary step in dinosaur toys came about when Chinese toy companies started producing cheap rubber dinosaur figures. One of the most prolific eras in dinosaur toy history was about to begin. During this period of the toy Mesozoic, nature would try out many new and fantastic forms and find a new way to furnish us with dinosaur toys. This was a time when many children got their dinosaur toys from large display boxes much like the one seen here, from the shelves of toy, department, grocery, and five and dime stores. It was the time of the Chinasaur. 
The Imperial Toy Company, along with a few other manufacturers such as Chi Tech and AAA, began to offer cheap rubber animals and monsters in these large display boxes. Seeing the popularity of dinosaur toys, they started creating a variety of prehistoric molds by the mid-1970s. The toys usually came in two different categories, large hard rubber molded dinosaurs or small dinosaurs that were usually created of a softer, more malleable rubber. The dinosaur toys were always produced with an eye towards scientific accuracy and education in mind. Okay, just kidding. They were usually just the opposite. They freely blended traits of different known species, such as this T-Rex with stegosaur plates on its back, or sometimes just made up details and waited for science to catch up. Science is still trying to catch up with some of these. They blended details and took liberties with details so often that it made it difficult to tell which species the dinosaur toy was trying to represent, if any. And because I love comparisons, I thought I would show some of our favorite old dinosaur toys alongside some of the most popular modern dinosaur toys. Liberties are still taken with details, but they tend to look a lot cooler. But I guess that depends on your point of view. These dinosaur toys were pretty large, usually standing between 8 and 12 inches high. They did sport painted details, which was an upgrade from the previous dinosaur toys. With some of these, I am just guessing the species they are supposed to represent, and they often did not have labels to tell you what they were supposed to be, like the Marks or Sinclair toys did. This T-Rex toy was by chi -Tech and offered in the same basic manner as the Imperial Dinosaur Toys. It was one of the largest of the dinosaur toys from this time period, and it was very common. Notice that most of these dinosaur toys have red eyes. I always thought that was an interesting detail as a child. This running T-Rex toy by the toy company Popo has become one of the most iconic modern rubber dinosaur toys, and I thought it would be nice to see it beside one of the most iconic rubber Tyrannosaurus Rex toys of the 1980s. And I guess this Demetrodon isn't too bad, but it was a little more difficult to mess up. The Demetrodon is and was one of the most popular non-dinosaur prehistoric beasts to be produced in toy form. And the Stegosaurus was also a popular dinosaur to be produced in toy form, but it often sported a lizard-like stance, an over-large head, or maybe an over-small body, and a mouth lined with sharp gnashing teeth and this one lacked the signature Thagomizers. It was often shown looking more like a giant lizard with stegosaurus plates attached to its back, like a dinosaur from an Irwin Allen film. To be fair, the stegosaurus was not always shown with a mouth filled with large, sharp teeth. These toys displayed a wide variance when it came to detail. And speaking of toothy malls, here is another childhood favorite, the Triceratops by the AAA Toy Company from 1978. And while there are many glaring inaccuracies, there's also quite a few traits that we see present in modern interpretations. I also think the paint scheme was interesting, especially for the time. And sometimes Imperial toys would just throw in some ferocious looking lizard toys with their dinosaurs and call them all prehistoric monsters. While not representing any particular species from any earthly time period, they were still usually fun toys for kids to play with. Here are some of the most popular. I don't know how many folks out there watching this have played Monster Hunter World, but the great Jagras creature always makes me think of these guys. Here is another popular Imperial Lizard toy that was often sold under the guise of Dinosaur or Prehistoric Beast. It was some kind of monstrous frilled lizard. In fact, due to the size and monstrous nature of these guys, many kids recognize them as great creatures to play alongside many of the sword and sorcery figures from the early to mid-1980s. Remco would also notice this and offer them alongside their warrior beast figures as mounts, pets, or just fierce roaming beasts. And while those were some of the most popular large hard rubber dinosaurs offered by Imperial and similar toy companies, there was another category of dinosaur toys produced by these companies and sold in relatively the same manner, the small, soft rubber dinosaur toys. 
and here is one of the most iconic and this is the first dinosaur toy that I ever owned. It stood about five inches high and sometimes had red eyes but also sometimes had white eyes. Here is this little guy up against one of his modern counterparts. This really isn't to disparage the old toys and I really like them for what they are, but more to show how the toys and depictions have changed through time. Another toothy Triceratops, but a bit smaller this time. The smaller dinosaur toys had much worse paint jobs and the paint was often going well outside the boundaries of the features that were being painted. And the paint was usually kept very minimal especially in the early small rubber dinosaur toys. And here's another, albeit smaller, predatory Stegosaurus. This one kept the Thagomizer on the tail though. And here we can see it with a modern rendition. And how about them Ankylosaurs? We did get a few different types with quite a bit of variability back in the day. I think this one was based on the Sauropelta, but it could have been based on the Gastonia. It's difficult to tell. Maybe I should just call the toy company and ask. And here's one of my favorite ancient renditions of the Ankylosaur. It almost looks like something from a medieval bestiary or a 1600s map. You've come a long way, baby. There were dozens and dozens of this type of dinosaur toy available in many different molds and paint variations. But there was one series of dinosaur toys that stood head and shoulders above the rest of the molded rubber rabble. The Invicta Dinosaur Models Beginning in the early 1970s, the Invicta Plastics Company started offering some truly high-quality dinosaur figures in terms of sculpt and details for the time. The line was advertised as being models and not toys, but they were actually pretty sturdy and well-made, and they were able to stand up to some pretty tough play. They were usually sold in museum gift shops, such as the British Museum of Natural History, and they continued to add prehistoric beasts to the lineup throughout the 1990s. Amongst the most famous are the T-Rex, the Brachiosaur, the Iguanodon, the Triceratops, and the Megalosaurus. Even though they are no longer considered scientifically accurate, they are considered dinosaur toy classics on par with Marx or Sinclair. The naturalistic detail for these figures was incredible, especially when compared to the contemporary dinosaur toys. They had detailed scales, scoots, ridges, and even waddles. The T-Rex is perhaps the most famous of the Invicta figures. The detail it sported was unique and naturalistic. It was really one of the best of its time. Invicta also produced paint kits so kids could paint the figurines. It is still relatively common to see many well-painted Invicta dinosaur models on display to this day. Back in 2005, I thought the V-Rex from the King Kong movie favored the Invicta T-Rex figure in many ways. Compared to the Invicta dinosaur figures, the Imperial and AAA figures seemed strange and unrealistic, but even they look like modern scientific renderings compared to the next selection of dinosaur toys that was common throughout the 1970s and 1980s. The strange and random world of toys that has become known as the Chinasaurs. The Chinasaurs were a common low-end toy set that became available in the 1970s. They were marketed under many different names, but usually fell under the Prehistoric Animals moniker. They bore absolutely no resemblance to any known dinosaur species and were just really a collection of strange but interesting monster toys. They were usually packaged in plastic bags and were found in grocery or dime stores. Here are some of the creatures from this set. They include a strange rhino dog, a spiky alien beagle, a bipedal armadillo of some kind, and a bipedal salamander who seems to just be fronting. And here are some more. A pincer-faced beast, a long-beaked turtle, a giant bug of some kind, and a spiky Barney-like guy who seems to just want a hug. 
It has been said that Gary Gygax, the creator of the Dungeons & Dragons game, was in need of some miniatures for play. He went out and bought a package of these little monsters and they became some of the most famous D&D monsters from that time, many of which are still around today, including the Rust Monster, the Boule or the Bullet, the Owlbear, and the Umberhulk. And believe it or not, some of these are still available today, but they often have been matriculated into more diverse sets with some other models, including knockoffs from those old Marx play sets. Boy, that mold has been copied and copied. This appears to be some great example of the copier effect mutation. Yeah, there are. And that would take us back full circle, right back to the beginning with the Marx play set. But I have one more type of toy dinosaur that I want to briefly discuss. The plush dinosaur toy. Plush dinosaur toys have been around for a very long time and have been available in dozens of varieties. For example, these plush dinosaur toys were offered by the Dakin Company and were produced in the 1970s. But they were not the toys that I wanted to briefly discuss. It is these stuffed dinosaur toys that I want to look at. The printed stuffed dinosaur toy. There were a lot of these toys produced in the late 1980s and early 1990s. They were all over the place. They were sold in toy stores and department stores and even those old science and nature stores found in the malls, like the Nature Company and Natural Wonders. Man, those stores were great. Probably the most famous and most prolific of these types of toy dinosaurs were the Dinosaur Giants line by the toy company Applause. They came in many different sizes and many different species. They were so prolific and popular that they were used in the gift shop scene in the 1993 film Jurassic Park. They were all over store shelves at that time and their sales probably saw a sharp boost due to their inclusion into this movie. Interestingly, Jurassic Park would offer its own version of these types of toys by the Dakin Toy Company that would compete directly with the older Dinosaur Giants line by applause. Well, that ends this romp through ancient prehistory and our look at many of the most popular dinosaur toys from the past. While these toys are not scientifically accurate by today's standards, and some of them were not accurate by any standards, they are still fun to look at and a great reminder of how we viewed these ancient beasts in past decades. They also remind us of how much we all love dinosaurs and dinosaur toys during our childhoods. Thank you for taking this trip into the ancient, savage, and somewhat befuddling past with us. I now return you to your current time period to resume your life in the civilized world. Please hit the like button and subscribe to stay in touch with future content and continue to join us for more adventures to look at the little things that made childhood a tale of triumph, evolution, and survival.